when Suzuki Philippines launched the Espresso, there were a few questions that came to mind. The big one was, will it replace the Solerio? Well, we have with us today the all-new Solerio, and we have our answer. It's a no, by the way. Before we get on with this quick preview, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you can get updated whenever we put out new content. Now if you're a fan of rugged looking cars, you'll like what Suzuki has done here. Gone are all the chrome slats up front. Instead, you get a chunkier looking front clip with this large black plastic trim underneath. If you think you've seen this look somewhere, and that's because this sort of looks like a baby Swift. See the shape of the headlights and this grill with the horizontal slat in the middle and the overall look of the front fascia. Granted, this is smaller and this is bigger on the Solerio, but the two hatchbacks really do look like siblings. Okay, the Solerio isn't that rugged all around. There aren't any claddings on the sides or on the door panels, and there aren't any out back either. But the lack of black plastics underneath do make those shiny wheels stand out a bit more. Out back, the Solerio gets a cleaner look, but it's not as bare as the old model with the pair of reflectors underneath. There are new look taillights too. Now in the old model, you might recall that these were placed a bit lower, whereas here, they're a bit higher and they slightly take the shape of the C-pillars and the rear windshield. Boot space is pretty generous here too. Suzuki says you've got 295 liters to work with here, but you can take this cover out and fold down the rear seats to open up even more space. For such a small car, the space here out back, it's okay. There's decent leg room, there's decent headroom for a five foot guy like me. It might not be comfortable for three people back here, but at least nikay magkakasikuhan pag dalawa lang kayo dito. There is no armrest in the middle. There are adjustable headrests though, and there are small bottle holders on either side. There aren't any AC vents back here, but you will find the power window controls down here. Pag medyo malakit siya mo tulad ko, medyo mahirap abutin yan. But jokes aside, I think on long drives, I'm gonna do just fine sitting back here. It's probably just as comfy up front than it is out back. You also have soft fabric seats here and the four-way adjustment for the driver's seat and the tilt adjustment for the steering wheel are both enough for me to find the right driving position. In terms of extra amenities though, well, of course, you won't get a lot of them here. For starters, you have a small touchscreen display here. It's got no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You also have power locks and power windows, the controls of which you can find up here. You can also find the AC controls here Thankfully, all of them are knobs. It's always a bonus for that. You have a basic instrument cluster here with a small digital display for the RPM, the gear indicator, and the fuel gauge. And the Solerio also comes with an idling stop-start system, which is by default always on. Well, it also has to be said that there are a lot of plastics around this cabin. Plastic here, here, here. You won't find any leather or soft-touch materials anywhere. But one thing I do like about this is this gear shift. Pogi eh, di ba? Although, you might notice, walang park. <laughs> but we'll talk more about the transmission later. For now, it's time to hit the road. hatchback, small engine. The all-new Solerio is powered by a 1-liter 3-cylinder engine that generates 66 horsepower and 89 newton meters of torque. It's really not much on paper and it's really not much in reality. The variant we're driving right now is the one with the automated manual gearbox or what Suzuki calls the auto gear shift. So basically it's just a manual gearbox 
but you're not the one doing the shifting. You feel na kumakambyo yung sasakyan, pero hindi ko yung kumakambyo. There's no third pedal, there's no stick shift here, and you're just driving as it is. Now, as for the engine, Suzuki says this is capable of doing north of 25 kilometers per liter. The new platform has supposedly improved handling, but I wasn't able to drive the old Celerio, so I can't really say for sure. But I can say that this one handles pretty well for a city car. You will feel and hear a lot of the road though, because sound insulation isn't really that good in this cabin. But again, that's what you'd expect from a car this small and at this price point. At least though, hindi naman siya matagtag. But you will want to avoid every pothole you come across because masasaktan yung kotse. The base Celeria variant with the manual transmission goes for 708,000 pesos. It's affordable for anyone looking for a starter car, but it may seem like a bit too much to ask when you know you've got an alternative for less than 600k like the Espresso. Honestly, if you're going for a manual anyway, you're probably better off getting that one instead. But if you're someone who doesn't know how or doesn't want to operate a stick shift, this higher variant is obviously the way to go. It's more expensive at 754,000 pesos, but you do get the auto gear shift feature and that alone is enough to warrant an upgrade from the more affordable Espresso. That should also settle the debate of whether or not this Celerio deserves a spot in Suzuki Philippines lineup. Anyway, that wraps it up for us today. Don't forget to follow us on social media. It's at Top Gear PH on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on TikTok. For Top Gear Philippines, this has been Leander Grecia, and I'll see you in the next one.